I thought I heard you home. I looked in the study. I was in the day room, persuaded into ping pong. My supporters were outnumbered and I was outplayed. Good day. Not bad. You? Yes, thank you. Where's Tim? Oh, even song, I suppose. You'd have thought what happened at his farewell performance would have put him off for life. I thought he coped with all that wonderfully. Oh, at least his father's kept his distance. Well, he could have written to the boy. <laughs> Eric. Tell me, did you go and see him? When? Oh, I don't know. Uh, before Tim's valediction. What are you talking about? When he was leaving, after that performance in the hall, he asked me if I knew you'd been up to his place. Those were his words. No. <laughs> he asked me if you'd told me you'd been up to his place. That's right. He said that. Well, I was sure you would have told me about it. Did he make any other accusations? Well, I don't think I gave him much time. Why leave it till now to ask me? You didn't then take a trip to see Eric? Of course not. Afternoon, Tom. How's tricks? Oh, you know. And how's Chalky? Afternoon, Mr. Farmer. Still serving the reprobates, I see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't seem to keep them out. <laughs> Better give them all a drink on me. Well, I shan't get the chance Christmas this year, will I? That's right, Mr. Farmer. We don't belong to you anymore, so you haven't got the obligation, have you? I'll see what people want, sir. Scotch for you? So, please. How are you, Greg? Sociable as ever? All right, Brian. Family well, Bob? There you go, sir. Chalky, don't forget the girls. One for yourself. Thanks very much, sir. Ladies? How's it going, Tom? Same again, please. I drive past most days. Freeman behaving himself. No problems. No union problems. Delivery problems. No. Yes? He's not your yes man anymore, Mr. Palmer. Oh, no. He's somebody else's yes man now. <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Palmer. There's nothing for you here, Eric. It isn't they don't care, but all the world loves to see a boss in the shit. And Freeman's doing well. You'll have seen the lorries bringing back materials. A month ago, they came back empty. Brian says cheers. Cheers, Brian. There's a good feeling round the place, Eric. There is this talk of retooling for a new contract next month. Overseas, Belgium. Freeman, he's promised me to take back some of the force you had to let go. Yeah, all right, promises, promises. I'll believe him. He's doing well, he's Freeman. Let him get on with it, Eric. Nothing personal. That's a lot there, Mr. Palmer. Six pound eleven. Six pound a year for cash. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Bottom of the eve, fetching and carrying. Yeah. No, you're important. Listen to me. I've had better than a hundred in a good year, and I pick five. You're important. The firm's assets. How old are you? What are you drinking? It's all right, Mr. Palmer. He's coming over here. Thanks. Listen to me. I trade places with you any time. That's the truth. Any time. Who are you? Sorry, I don't know who you are. Come on, Dave. We've got a game going over here, mate. Uh, don't forget to change, Mr. Palmer, sir. Stick it in the redundancy box. That way, you'll all get the benefit. Uh, Eric? Um... 
um, Elizabeth. Oh, I'd hope to get you in person. Look, um, phone me, will you? Oh, no, no. D don't phone. I'll... Elizabeth, sorry about last time. Now, what it is, I need to know what you told Mark. You know what I mean, about... You know that too, but don't phone. I'll, I'll call again. Yes. Is Timothy Palmer here, please? He's doing his homework. Ah, the presenter asked if I'd call. Who? Mr. Carolyn. My name is Davison. I'm head server. Well, let the fellow in. I'll vouch for him. Good evening, sir. How are things, Richard? I haven't seen you for a chat for ages. Fine, thank you, sir. I'll tell him you're here. Uh, the presenter asked if I'd call and put Tim properly in the picture about serving. If that's all right with you, of course. Well, we've already talked it over. Davison, who serves heads. I told him you were doing your homework. Do you want him in here? No. Well, some people have it, some don't. What? Never mind. How many years were you in the choir? Five. And you want to be a server? Yes, please. Everybody wants. Tony Mells doesn't. Mells is a cretin. Do you want a crafty one? What do you mean? A drink, idiot. Beer. Yes, please. <laughs> Did they ask who you're getting it for? No. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers. Caro thinks you have possibilities. He says you've got a sense of occasion. Caro said it'd be specially useful in the school holidays when other servers couldn't do it. I call him Caro. You call him the presenter or Mr. Carolyn. I heard your valediction was screwed up by a drunk. Mel said it was your father. Was it? Yes. I know a lot about you. Three people told me you beat up Fielding because he took your solo. Is that true? Yes. I'd have done exactly the same. How's the beer? Great, thanks. I love the cathedral. So do I. It's a pity you weren't head chorister instead of that fool Mel's. You were head chorister when I joined the choir. We were shit scared of you. Yes, well, that was the general intention. Do you believe in God? Of course, yes. Do you trust in God? I told you, yes. Not believe. Trust. Like this. By the way, at Evensong, don't use the Prebendal stalls anymore. It's not approved. Done a really stupid thing, Sandy. What really stupid thing? Do you remember that time I went to see Eric? After he'd been here breathing old booze and threats, yes. You must wonder why I never told you about it. Well, it's your affair. I imagine that whatever happened you wanted to keep to yourself. It's very simple. 
We had a row. It turned nasty. He hit me, I hit him. Dear God. <laughs> That's all right. I could handle that. That's the way life with Eric was. Quick flashpoints, quickly over. Highs and lows. We both got very emotional. And suddenly they were in each other's arms? No. Oh. I don't know. I just found out his business was in bad trouble. How hard he was struggling to keep it going. I felt so sorry for him. I hope you also felt sorry for your son and the trouble that the Gloucester trip brought him. Yes, that's how it started. I told him to keep his hands off the boy. We insulted each other and suddenly he was telling me how we shouldn't have been divorced. How good it had been between us. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, that's when it turned violent. It was exactly as he'd been saying. We were on some kind of high. Anyway, I pulled myself together as fast as I could and fled. I nearly turned the car back and went straight back at one point. The feeling was that strong. But nothing happened. I'd call that nothing. And is that the really stupid thing you say you've done? No. I never told Mark that I'd been to see Eric, but it turns out that Eric did, when they were shouting at each other in the study. Last night, Mark asked me directly if what he said was true, and I panicked and lied. Do you know exactly what was said? No. And every time I phone him, I get that bloody answering machine. I can't ask him to phone me in case Mark answers. I don't want to put anything in writing. I don't know what to do. Well, if you're asking agony aunt advice from me, lay the whole business before Mark. Oh, I can't. Mark's very trusting. He's very vulnerable. He's also highly intelligent, and I would have thought compassionate. Yes, but Mark and I don't have highs like that, Sandy. I don't want him making comparisons. I don't want him hurt. Oh, good morning. I'll be with you instantly. Please feel free to look round. Every now and then, Missy, and I thank God not too frequently, I find myself, for no very good reason, consumed by lust. It, it's a wonderfully exact description, and it's no use telling myself that at my age I'm imagining it and that a good breath of air will blow it all away. What do you do? Get over it as best I can. Remind myself of the laughable grotesquerie of the situation. Or maybe simply look in a mirror. Oh, Sandy. But I do not indulge myself. I do not run round looking for fire to play with, no matter how chilly the prospect. That's what I'd call doing a really stupid thing. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, ma'am. Can I help you? Set him on a pinnacle of the temple and say, If thou art the son of God, cast thyself down. We can see why it was a temptation. Look, it's unreal. You could float. Could skip lunch and stay up here. Can't. Mark's on duty. I'd see I wasn't there. Invent, little boy, a story. Any story. Everybody twists Mark around the little fingers. That's why it's so popular. Do you often come up here? When I was advising for GCE, I used to spend the whole day up here if the weather was good. On your own? Sometimes one of the GCE group came too. No, I mean any boys. Like me. Is Timothy jealous? Don't be stupid. Sorry. Mark and your mother. All right. Minor of pain. Am I going to be a servant, Davison? Don't call me Davison. Don't call me anything. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Oh, 
old is she? Who? Your mother. About 30, I think. Dirty old Mark. sort of request people stick on the prayer board. I mean, God's got better things to do than cure grandfathers of cancer and get little Johnny's parents back together again, I can tell you. I suppose so. I lit a candle once. That's all right. I do it myself sometimes. Actually, I did leave a message. You know, a request for prayer. I wrote it with my left hand so nobody would know it was me. Why did you want to be prayed for? Did you hear me? I asked you why. Actually, I steal things. What things? Money. Where from? My mother's shop. You're a thief? It's nothing, really. I'll stop. I have stopped, honestly. How much have you taken? About 85 pounds. What, what do you do with it all? Just keep it in a box in my room. You're right to tell me. Sort of relief, really. You know, confession. I nearly told Mr. Carolyn. Well, he wouldn't have understood. None of the clergy would. You've been asking questions. How'd you know I'd be? Well, where else have you got to go? You want to get away from this place? Drink? You ask questions. You try to fix meetings with ex-directors. You try your luck with Tom Bridges and the lads at Chalkies. Christine tells me you met her two days ago. By chance, she says, asked her questions. I'm the man. Ask me. This will make a good story, will it? Give Edmonds and the rest of that. Piss up. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction. Listen to me, Eric. Get this straight. There's no way back. There's no one campaigning. They're all too bound up with their own futures to worry about a man who used to be boss. Why tell me this? We expect to form a new company with Jeff Donaldson. He'll have the main office at Buckingham. Here, we'll switch emphasis to the servicing side of the trade. That's right. Taking jobs you'd never have looked at. You'll break within the year. Tunnel vision. It's a problem with the self-made man, Eric. All the bullshit and bravado in the world, but never the confidence to take a trip up a side road and see the view from there. Is that what they say about me? Oh, I don't know what they say. I don't go in for the daily lap of honor around the place as you did. Why? You lost your drive. You're drinking. You'd come to believe you were the firm. As long as you were still there, everything was okay. Because everything had to reflect glory on you, you blocked new ideas. But new as far as you were concerned. Caltrax, if I'd got the contract. Now, your days were always numbered. It isn't the time for Eric Palmer's. It was after you mishandled the Caltrax deal that Edmonds came to see me. Tell me what to do. You've got your private pension schemes? All this is in your name? Use it. Start up again, somewhere else. 
Get off our backs. Too old! Too bloody old! You've heard me tell you a thousand times, man. Well, what's the alternative? That? You're not too old. You're scared. Scared of starting again and failing again. You know, the first time you were pointed out to me, they said, that's Eric Palmer, human dynamo. Look at you now. I'll see you down, little man. Get us, Eric. Go somewhere else. Do something new, but do something. Good luck. <laughs> Here beginneth the vegetarian fiver. No, 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 no. Ah, the feeding of the 5,000 with seven loaves. Whole meal. Quite. And five potatoes baked in jackets. Oh, stop it. I heard. Follow me, says the Lord, and I will make you eaters of quiche. <laughs> Someone's having a good time. Why not? Tell them to pipe down if they're too noisy. It's not that. I just don't like that Davison boy, that's all. I thought you wanted Tim to have new friends. Friends his own age. And nothing to do with singing of the Richard cathedral. Davison has nothing to do with singing. You know what I mean? The cathedral. Neil Carolan trusts him absolutely. So what? I think he's strange and spooky, and I don't like my son giggling away out there like some schoolgirl with a crush. Richard Davison is intelligent and responsible. If Tim finds that interesting, good. I didn't expect you to understand. What's wrong? Something upset you? Has something happened I know nothing Nothing's about? Nothing's wrong. Nothing is wrong. Well, whatever's brought on this whole bitchy mood, I'm sick and tired of it. Don't take it out on them, and don't take it out on me. Where are you going? These have to be corrected by tomorrow. I'm going to go and work in the study. What? Well, for God's sake, can't we even talk? I want to talk to you, Mark! I'm not going to fight with you, Elizabeth. Is that what you think I want? I don't know what the hell you want! I want to talk to you! Do I have to make an appointment? Please remember where you are. I'm not likely to forget. If you run into that study... Sir. If you run into that sanctuary of a study and shut the door against me, I have more pride than to knock politely or come back some other time. Your mother doesn't like me. She's good fun, usually. Mark, too. Parents are a pain. I told you. Now you can show me this cash box. What about honour thy father and my mother? Oh, I've got ways of honouring mine that drives them mad. Can you get out of this place at night without anybody knowing? I don't know. Yes. I'll meet you outside the shop at 1.30. What for? Bring the money. We'll put it back. What's wrong? Scared? No. Well, you want to be one of my servers, right? Decor. Oh, don't be boring, little boy. Sorry. Yes, yes, I do. Well, it's plainly impossible if you keep this money you've stolen. So it's a sort of test. A penance. My mother does like you, honestly. She's just a bit tired lately. We won't do any damage. We'll just leave proof we've been. We'll put the money back. And that makes everything good again. I go everywhere. Like a cat. 
Why did you marry me? Because I loved you. I love you now. I wanted you to be Tim's father. Why do you have to ask? When you and Tim came into my life, I counted myself the luckiest man alive. For five years, that luck's run on. <sighs> Is that how you see it, luck? To be a family man at my age, the companionship, the good humor, the closeness. I love you. You are worth loving. I wish you could believe that. We were happy, we were settled. Suddenly, it's all changed and we have to confront each other like this. What's gone wrong? I don't know what you mean. Nothing has gone wrong. Every it's night. Eric, isn't it? It's got to be Eric. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't treat me like a fool. Do you think I'm so gullible I don't connect Eric's eruption into our lives with the way you've been behaving? There's no point. Listen, in... Elizabeth, you wanted this. Things had to be said. All right, let's have them said now. Such as what happened when you went to see Eric. I did not go. No! Elizabeth, no! You went to him, you saw him in his house, your house. He told me, and I believe him. Yes, all right, I went there. Well, then, why in God's name didn't you tell me? What happened? Nothing happened. I don't believe you. If nothing happened, what's all this lying and concealment been about? Physically. Nothing physical happened. Oh, what the hell is that supposed to mean? I'm trying to tell you. Look, very briefly, there was... Very briefly, there was... I don't even know what to call it. An attraction. Oh, Try that. Yes. A sexual attraction. All right, but nothing happened. Then why didn't you tell me? Am I so unreasonable? Because you could have been hurt. You could have misunderstood. Oh. You think it doesn't hurt me more that you feel I need protecting against something like that? You think I don't know how I must seem in comparison with Eric? Mark, please, it isn't like that. How can it be otherwise? I'm 20 years older than you. Don't pretend it doesn't matter! I left Eric. I married you. But it's not working, is it? Well, we can deal with it. We're not helpless. But part of you is still attracted to him. You said so. Mark, his firm is in bad trouble. That's why he's coming more and more into our lives lately. He's got time on his hands. But we don't have to be passive. We're not his playthings. Do you still love him? Oh! What the hell do you want? Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I did knock several times. I just wanted to thank Mrs. Fellows for the food and coffee and to say good night. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Fellows. Listen to me, please. What we have is good. Valued. Please believe me, it's valued. Ask any woman if she had to choose between a... Well, between a... I don't know any other women. Gentleman of leisure, then? Not by choice. Who is that? <laughs> You've heard about my bit of bad luck? That's what it's called, is it? That car of yours safe in the yard out back. Still got the big house. No pension schemes lined up. No smart solicitor digging away for compensation. A bit of bad luck. I'd say that's just about right. What do you say, Len? So, where have you been these seven years? Seven? There's no Sarah. How's the lady and the little lad? They're well. She married again? Yes. You on your own? 
Yes. What do you want from me? Take a break, then. Tell you what, I'll have another pint. A bottle for yourself and whatever this young man's drinking. He'll pay. He used to be dark mild. I knew where to find you. Monday, Wednesday nights. That's my life, Eric. I remember your name, see? <laughs> Wouldn't forget you. Bloody young Rick you were. Green from school. Full of yourself like an egg. Ten years later, you were your own man. The boss. I'm low, Rick. Cast down. Corn Samaritans. Nobody. Knows me, Baron, you. I knew you once. You were lucky. You caught me at my best. We not long won a war. We were tired, but we were hopeful. From now on, we'd think for ourselves. Well, we'd all seen what our officers and betters were capable of. Namely, sweet F.A. All plan. It looked like we were growing up. I met you not long after. Remember? And you weren't the first rough and tough no, but I bullied and badgered into night school. Remember? Remember how I shifted you from that rat hole we worked in, where your only ambition was beer, fags, and a wage packet that'd cover them, to Atkinson's, where they gave apprenticeships worth having to youngsters worth taking on. Hope, bags of it if you knew where to look. You and a dozen like you. I pushed you bloody up and on. You and a dozen like you. Where did it all go, lad? I came to 60 years, got early retirement in this government. It's winner take all, son. I can't help you if you're not a winner. So don't come sniffing round me for the good old days that I boot up the arse in the right direction. Look round you. The rewards of a lifetime's hard graft. Don't come weeping on my shoulder. I'm so dried out I crumble like an old sponge. Never introduced you, Len. Mr. Palmer. Used to be Palmer Hydraulics. One of my lads. Thanks for the drink, Derek. I'll see you sometime. Look out for yourself. Whiskey, large. Any preference? What would you like in your scotch? Just water. I'll get some fresh. Not many about tonight. Bad time between summer holidays and Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Have one with me. Thank you very much. You weren't coming. Got the money. Come on. Oh, no, can't open this. It's boarded up from the inside anyway. <laughs> You're really shit scared, aren't you? 
Do we have to? Yes. That window. What's the other side? Just a storeroom. Give me the money. Come on up. It's not that high. Ah, oh, you're useless. Are you crying? No. Keep watch. Listen for people. Get out of the way. I like you. What's the matter with you laughing like that? You want a drink, you get a drink. <laughs> it's a sad house, is this? It's not like a proper home. There's a place for your records and tapes. Nobody else's records. Ah, oh, tapes. No, listen. This is where you come for your booze. And your table up there. I bet you sit up at the end, lord and master, all on your own. Am I right? Mind reader. <laughs> you want a good woman. That's what Eric wants. Got anyone in mind? <laughs> <laughs> Pig. <laughs> Tina will visit. Regular. Is that good? Would you like that? I was nothing, had nothing, came from nothing. With my family, I was something. Your mum and dad? <laughs> my family. Wife and children. I bet I know how she kissed. <laughs> Did she kiss like this? No, that's a mummy kiss. This is how she kissed. Right. I don't mind if you can't do it. Can't you do it?
to the police for this. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I know, but can you do me a favor? Thanks. Bloody nutter. Everything is just as I found it. Police? Oh, yes. But well, somebody's broken in. The fact that they've left all this is neither here nor there. What's the opposite of theft, Sandy? Restitution? See you, Mrs. Clark. Yes, thank you, Jason. It's all so elaborate. Like some sort of practical joke. No joke. Must have given you one hell of a shock. Yes. Luckily, the infant Wells Fargo were very supportive. Why restitution? Well, if, let's say, I'd taken money from the till and then found conscience struck or something, I don't know, I might feel pressing need to return it all. But we'd know if all this lot went missing. Bit by bit, over many months. I caught Tim at the till once. We know he serves himself if we're in the back room, but he always pays. Not this one time. Oh, Sandy, why didn't you tell me? Well, it didn't seem worth all the trouble if it was just once. And it was the day before the valediction. I thought he might have been under pressure. Anyway, he took a fiver saw me watching and nearly died on the spot. Has he talked to you about it? Oh, no. He's made a point of keeping out of my way since then. I'll phone for a carpenter to fix the window. I'll be back as soon as I can. Whoever it was got in through the upstairs passage window. I don't know how. Probably from the wall. What did in the shopper mean? Whoever it was. What did he do? Oh, pulled down all the notices and pinned up a lot of money in a silly sort of warning. Beware of the cat. Probably thought he was being funny. The question is, do we inform the police? We ought to. A break-in's a break-in, unless there's something we don't know about. Tim, Sandy says she saw you take money from the till once. The problem is where all those notes came from. Now, let's say for the sake of argument, they've been taken. No, let's use the proper word. They've been stolen. Well, anyway, they had vanished over a period of time from the shop. Very few people would have had the opportunity of taking them. It would be brave to try and put them back. Tim. Excuse me. Tim. No, sit down, Tim. Were you out late last night? No. What about early this morning? Excuse me. We have to get this sorted out, Tim. Uh, Tim, come back here. Have you ever taken money from your mother's till? Tim, it's all Excuse right. Excuse me! No, Mark. No, leave this to me. And where did you get to, little boy? 
I told you to keep watch. They know! About me taking the money, don't you understand? They know! Get out of here. The priest will be here any minute. Who knows? Mark and my mother, I know they do! You said nobody knew! Sandy saw me! Who? It doesn't matter! Sandy, she just papered, she saw me, they know everything! Don't be stupid! I guess someone put the money back. What do we do? Nothing to do with me. But, listen, Davison... You were supposed to have a sense of occasion to keep cool. But when we were on the tower, you said... You're out of your mind. Nobody's allowed up there without permission. None of this has anything to do with me. What are you talking about? You're not even a server. Don't run, boy. What's the matter, son? You all right? Come on, I'll take you home. Let's get out of this bloody place. 